is, uh, I think, uh, next service we'll have a uh, testimony service. Hallelujah! Amen! Yes, sir, the testimony service. Amen! Where yeah, the testimonies, we take over the entire service in the name of Jesus. Amen! The Lord is so good. And what a spiritual coincidence. Today is the first day of May. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Lord has started giving us testimonies in the, on the first day. Amen. Throughout this month of May, testimony shall not sit in your home in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you are about to recover from one, another one has happened. Amen. People will change your name to Mr. and Mrs. Testimony. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, the word of God coming unto us is titled The Power of Productive Thinking. The Power of Productive Thinking. The Power of Productive Thinking. Productive Thinking is one of the God given assets to mankind. The prayer that God gave to man is unquantifiable in performance. The woman brain. God deposited something in the head of the man that can change the world. When it is well engaged, do you remember about the power of productive thinking? When we begin to engage our brains, we can do wonderful and unspeakable things. Every lawful success, every milestone success you see on earth is as a result of productive thinking, productive thinking. We are not maximizing what God has deposited on this earth. If you look around our world, you will see great things that have been manufactured. The eight wonders of the world, manufactured by human brain, that God has deposited in the head of a man. You don't need to look too far. Just look around you and see a lot of things. All these things that are performing around you, we are not created by God Himself directly. They were products of man through productive thinking. Productive thinking. When you engage this your brain, when you come out, you will be amazed when you see what comes out from when you engage this brain. The millions of cells in the brain. They are supernaturally endowed to bring something out of nothing. The brain is loaded, but we don't engage the brain. Let's talk today we are talking about productive thinking on engaging the brain to get the best that God has for us. Nobody succeeds by accident from death. There is no success that happens by accident. It is a calculated attempt that you must put your brain at work if you want to experience magnitude of God's glory in your life. The brain has been endowed to be put to work. Put your brain to work. Think. I remember the story of the richest man, one of the richest men on earth today called Bill Gates. The story said that when Bill Gates was very small, he would often go and isolate himself, take it. So one of those days, the mom was calling Bill Gates. Bill! He did not answer. Bill! He did not answer. And the doctor, Bill, where are you? And he called you. He answered the wrong. I am thinking, can't you think? 
And when you see Microsoft today, you will know the power of the thinking of the gates from childhood. The power of productive thinking. The brain is overloaded. But we don't maximize it. We don't put it to work. We don't need to travel out to make things happen in our lives. God has given us a, 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 a miracle. The miracle of things happening in our life is our bread. When you productively engage your bread, you become a wonder to your generation. The bread is overloaded, but we don't engage it. I see after today, there shall be a fresh activation in your brain that will bring out the miracle that you have been desiring in the name of Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, there's something that God said there. He says that. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound what? Mind. You don't need God to throw money from heaven. The sound mind that God has deposited in you will give you money. Supernatural capital that God has endowed in your life to generate money. Supernatural endowment. The bread is a miracle. The power of productive thinking. Life changing ideas drop in your brain when you engage your brain in productive thinking. Life changing ideas. Life changing ideas that when you process it, you will change from nobody to somebody. When you engage yourself in productive thinking, and I want to draw a pattern as I'm going to this point productive thinking is different from worry. There are different between productive thinking and to worry. I'm not talking about worrying. I'm talking about engaging your brain positively to think and come out with something that is of value. It's different from worrying. Some people waste all their life worrying. That is not thinking. The brain is meant to be engaged positively to bring out the level we are waiting for God. Everything do not end in prayers. That's the mistake we are doing. After prayer, there is need for you to separate yourself and think. In the course of the thinking, ideas will come upon your head. Prayer is different. When you finish prayer, you separate yourself. Let me tell you something that is very important. As an adult, you're supposed to have at least 30 minutes every day on your own. 30 minutes. No husband, no wife, no children, no television, no telephone, telephone. 30 minutes every day. You will have an isolation to sit somewhere and think. Thinking is work. There's an adage from my place. It said that somebody that does not know where rain started beating him will not also know where the rain stopped beating him. Every day you engage yourself in your business or career, you come back. You make a lot of errors. You go back and sleep. You wake up with the errors. You continue the next day. Why? You never sat down to think about the business the previous day. But every day, you give yourself 30 minutes. That 30 minutes is only you, only you, nobody there. Now you begin.
begin to recap what happened throughout the day. How did I spend my day? Where did I went wrong? What error did I commit today? Is it correctable? How do I improve on the errors? How do I move forward? What do I need to add on what I have done today? What do I need to remove that was not okay in what I have done today? That is self oppressor You need it every day. You need to think. There's no way you can make progress by repeating error that you did yesterday. You need to reason and know where do I got it wrong? How do I move forward? That is what will bring progress in your life. The power of productive thinking. Listen, every day I have it personally. No matter how important you are bringing anything to me, if that time is when you come, you must have to wait. I have a time I ask myself a lot of questions about my life. I have a time every day that I stay and meditate on what has happened for the day and make a man that know what will happen in this day. If the children come around that time, I will tell them, you understand? If I tell them I'm thinking, you know the next thing you have to do, you have to go. Because I need to engage my brain. I need to engage my brain in productive thinking. You cannot progress in my progress in life when you are not thinking. Thinking is what? And is what is. If God thinks, we are living well today because God is thinking about us. He expresses the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said the thought I think towards you is what? Thought of peace and not of evil. So God is thinking about us. And that's why the sea cannot overflow us. He has given the sea mark where it should stop. That's why if the heat is much, we will control it. He is thinking, God thinks about us. So why don't we think? Most people don't think. Especially black men, praise God. Praise God. Black people don't want to think. You know what they are good at? They are very good at buying the thoughts of others. Praise God. The black man will allow the white man to go and think. The white man will think and manufacture something. The black man will just ask, how much? Praise God. How much? I want to change my car. My car is no problem. I don't like this one. I need a new model. Do you know it's human beings that are manufacturing the car? The old and the new. Have you thought about how we are even manufacturing the one that is old? We don't think from that perspective. We are only concerned on what to buy. And that's why in this part of the world, 98 to 99 percent of what we are using here and what we are eating are all are all imported. Imported. Those are the, the brain child of people. The people thought and manufacture, and we are waiting for the finished product because we don't want to engage this brain. Let me tell you a story. Praise God. Somebody went to where they sample brain. There was a place they sample all the brain of great men on earth. They sample the brain somewhere, and somebody went and said he needed to buy brain. So he was looking at the prices, the price tag on the brains of those people that we are that we are sampled. Then I saw the brain of Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. They said the brain was two dollars. He saw the brain of Abraham Lincoln. They said the brain was three dollars. He saw the brain of all the great men, the white men. Their brain were two dollars, five dollars. And I saw the brain of black men. They said the brain was five hundred thousand dollars. And I said, Why? These are great men. Their brain is supposed to be more expensive. The person that was taking care of the brain started laughing, and he said, You don't understand. 
These ones that their brains we are two dollars, five dollars, they have exhausted everything in the brain. There was nothing again left. He said, but the black man's brain was fresh. Nothing was taken away. And that's why it's too expensive. And he died with the brain. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Look at 2 Samuel. 
Des bouts comme ça, comme ça meurt, ça t'a fini. Second Samuel chapter 15 and I'm reading from verse. Let me just tell you to protect the seven, but just have big keen attention towards that. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 32. And it came to pass that when the king was come to the top of the mount where he worshiped God, behold, who shall the Agatha came to meet him with, with, with his coat, bread, and earth upon his head. Unto whom they will say, If that person come with me, that shall be a warning unto me. For if thou return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant, be that way. So will I now also be thy servant, then myself, then mayest thou for me defeat the castle of Ahithophel. And that and has thou not there with thee, Zadok and Abiata, the priest? Therefore it shall be that one thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiata, the priest. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiata's son. And by them ye shall say unto me everything that ye can hear. So who shall David's friends? came into the city and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Musa came to David as he was running away from Absalom, David looked and said, okay, okay. Musa, if you stay with me, you'll be a body. There is nothing you can be doing for me now. You can perform better when you go back to Absalom, my son. They see him that I want to work with him. You'll be able to know their secrets. Now, Abia child is there. We'll be able to communicate. Their sons shall come and tell me the secret of Absalom. So we can be able to defeat the, the castle of Ahithophel. And this was what destroyed the castle of Ahithophel. Because when Pusha went back and they were asking him against the castle of Ahithophel, he said the other way around and gave them the information. And that was how Absalom now told Ahithophel that he should go, his castle will not be taken. He went and committed suicide. And after that, Absalom was working, thinking that he was working with Kusha, without knowing that he was not working with him, that he was working with David, productive thinking, self David and his kingdom. When we begin to think productively, we will be able to be delivered from the, all the, the, the schemes and all the projections and manipulations of the wicked. That was what self David, and that was how David defeated Absalom and returned back to his kingdom. I see your brain being activated today for productive thinking in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Meditation has always been there. If you check the great man from the scripture, you see that they meditate. The productive thinking is also a way of meditation. You go out to meditate over your day. It's not only the word of God. This, our first right, called Isaac. Isaac was a man of meditation. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 24, you see that Isaac, every day Isaac isolated himself to go and think. That was the nature that Isaac was. In the book of Genesis 24, verse 63, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evil time, and he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels we are coming. Every evening Isaac goes to go and meditate. And they will have praised his days and begin to think about his life, to know what to do and know what not to do. At this point in time, when he was waiting for Rebecca to come back, when he was waiting for a wife, what about when he was, when he was meditating and he saw the camel coming, that the servant of the father came to the wife. So we have to, um, we have to meditate, we have to meditate, we have to engage our brain in productive thinking. You have to take stock of your life every day. Every blessed day, separate yourself for some time and take stock. Know where you are missing and correct your ways and move forward. That is how to move forward in life. A man that was a notorious man in the Bible, the name was not wrong. Jesus called him by his actions and by his attitude. He called him the prodigal son. He did not tell us his name because of how wild the boy was. He was a wild guy, a 
and Jesus did not bother to mention his name, they called him the prodigal son. The prodigal son spawned out the father's morning. When he said prodigal son, something happened to him. When he was at the height of his, his recklessness, before he was able to gain his himself and deliver himself from a self, life self sentence, it was thinking. He, 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 he taught himself part of his problem. Productive thinking saved him from the swallow where he was. It was productive thinking. The word of God says in the book of Luke chapter 15, talking about the prodigal son. From verse 17, look at what happened to him. Luke 15, verse 17. And the word of God says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father? Father, have bread enough and to spare, and I spread it with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was near the great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The prodigal son taught himself out of his problem. It was the thought, productive thought, that delivered the prodigal son, not prayer. He has been praying, but he needed to engage himself on a productive thought. And he taught himself out of his problem. The thought came that what am I doing here? What about saying when he came to himself? You know what it means? When he came to himself, there's always a type of sanity when you begin to think. When you begin to think, you are talking to yourself. Most of the times, your spirit is far away from you. It is in the type of productive thinking you can come to yourself. That was the turning point of the prodigal song. When he came to himself, he now started thinking, how many servants of my father are well off and they are eating pig? And they are now cursing me and challenging me because I'm eating pig's food. I think I'm going to become a servant to my father instead of suffering here in, 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 in the outside. And he has to arise. He processed his thoughts. He made a move. Most people have good thoughts. But they never make a move. You need to process your thought. When that thought comes, you need to make a move. Some people have decided that they have made a mistake and they will die with the mistake. They decided that ah, now I have made a mistake. I don't know what people will say. I don't know what they will think about me. Ah, how can I go and share now that they are shared? I don't want to face reproach. The prodigal son did not think like that. The prodigal son was thinking of solution. And he figured himself out of his problem. Any problem that you are into, challenges you are into, I see you today moving out of them and riding the tunnels over them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Time will not permit us, but if you go to the book of Mark chapter 5, you will see the case of the woman of Israel's blood. The word of God says she sat down at home and talked herself out of her problem. She decided. In the book of Mark chapter 5, from 25 to 29, she decided that listen, this is what I will do. I know it is not enough for me to carry myself and go and meet a holy man like Jesus and his disciples. But this is what I will do. If I can only succeed in touching the hem of his garment, I know I will receive pity. I know they will push me. But I've got up my mind. And what God said that he said to herself, he decided with herself. I'm going to talk to him about his garment. And she made up her mind. And let me tell you something. Nobody can stop you when you are talking over something and decide to make a move. I want to tell you, any decision you make, God is waiting for your decision. God is waiting for you to utilize that prayer, which is a miracle in your life. Engage your prayer productively. Engage your prayer and begin to walk out of every challenge that has been tying you down for years. Because the prayer is a miracle from God. The woman of Israel got down and they thought the end of his garment and made the Nobody stopped her and she succeeded. Nobody has ever thought. But the news, they saw the news in the book of Mark chapter 10. He was shouting, they nearly shut it down. He said, No. He made up his mind that he must hear me. And he shouted the more and she was hearing. There is no move 
that you have thought and processed and moved that nobody can stop you. And God is waiting for you to make a move. God is waiting for you to replace your miracle brain, to think yourself out of wherever that Satan has placed you. I see it happening in your life today in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you one bitter truth. If you don't think you stick, anybody that don't think sticks. So if you don't want to stick, you think. You have an option. Either to think or to stick. Because those are the two options that are left. So you have to make a move. It's a season of taking yourself out of your problem. And as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. You know that the main thought is, a, is, is as potent as prayer. Your thinking is as powerful as prayer. The word of God said, Look up, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. All to give wisdom with the grace, sinly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that will tell us. Your thought is as powerful as your prayer. So, anytime you engage yourself in thinking, productive thinking, you are creating a new future for your life. If you don't like your life, you can regret it. And how do you regret it? You regret your mind through productive thinking. Because whatever you think, remember the book of Proverbs. It says, as in as in thinking in his heart, so is he. So we look at our life today and just talk. And let me tell you one bit of truth. If you don't think, Satan will bring a picture in your heart that will take as your thoughts. Because God must answer one thing in your mind. Either you want thoughts or any fabricated image, negative image and problem that Satan has set upon that heart. So you have to think. Because if you leave your heart in vacuum, Satan will position another picture there, which is negative. And remember, God answers thoughts. As you think in your heart, so are you. And God does a thing that you say, what are you able to do? Above all the ask for things. Manifestly, we do more than that. So we're supposed to know that our thoughts, God answers it. And we don't have any choice that to engage our mind in positive thinking and productive thinking. Because we are controlled by our thoughts. If you check the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, we are controlled by our thoughts. Our actions follows our thoughts. Our actions follows our thoughts. The moment you think about something, now, if you think about something, next thing is action. And that is why if you want to convict somebody of criminal proceeding, criminal proceeding in law, before somebody shall be convicted, they must check what is called near prayer, men's prayer, and actus reals. What it means is the intention, the thought. If somebody has a thought to commit a crime and it takes action, that person must definitely be convicted. But if the thought is not there, the person cannot be convicted. Because even as carnal as law is, law understands that there is power in thought, that we cannot commit a crime without your thoughts. So there is power in those brains, there is power in those minds, engage them positively today, so that the wicked powers do not hijack your thoughts and bring destruction upon your thoughts. And may the Lord bless you as you may engage your thought productively in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Lord it. Praise God. I want you to pray for yourself. I said, God, watch my mind of every negative thought and give me grace to engage myself in productive thinking henceforth. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mind and pray. Oh God, let there be a portion of Lord of anything that is not productive in the thought of our lives. Watch us, O Lord, from negative thoughts. And fill us up, O Lord, and give us spiritual muscle to be able to engage in productive thinking that might be able to become champions in our generations. Thank you, Lord Jesus, who give you grace. In Jesus, who is powerful and pray. Amen. Amen. If you have not met with Christ, it's time to meet with Christ. It is the Holy Ghost that can give you power to think and to think productively. Anywhere you are, if you have not met with Christ right now, bow down your hands right now as you pray. Anyway, we are going to confess your sins right now and ask Jesus, please take our child of my life. Take child of my life right now and forgive my sins and cleanse me from all of righteousness. I want to be your Jesus. Deliver me, O Lord, from all forms of all those sins, iniquities, and transgression. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' most powerful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me let me say this prayer of faith after me. Believe Jesus in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. I'm on the third day you lose again, and I might be justified. Thank you for saving me from sins and Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, your grace has brought these works. Let the name of your grace preserve them in the name of Jesus. That the day you will come, O Lord, now they shall be found once in Lord. Thank you for answering prayers. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. Amen. amen and amen. The Lord bless you as we are blessing to God's word and the quality, productive thinking shall give fruit in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.